Maboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Um, tonight's uh, lecture will be on the uh, coming of the Messiah, again, the coming of Mashiach. Um, at the end of all my lectures, I end with the words, that may the Mashiach come quickly in our time, Messiah. The question becomes, why do we pray for the Messiah? And who is the Messiah? And what will the time of his coming be like? So there is no definitive answer to the question of Mashiach. Different scholars throughout the years have offered different opinions. The Rambam, Maimonides, states that there will be a time of the coming of Mashiach. He will do no miracles, but he will bring peace to the world. In reality, that in itself is a miracle. And uh, after a period of approximately 40 years, the era of what we call Tchiat HaMesim, the revival of the dead will occur. And then after that era will be the era of Olam Haba, what we call the world to come, and that, that will begin then. Now the Ramban, Nachmanides, has a different opinion. He states that the coming of Mashiach will usher in both the revival of the dead and the world to come in unison. There are those sages who suggest that heaven and the Garden of Eden, Gan Eden, exist in a parallel universe where we exist after death, to be followed by a new dimension, which we will call Olam Haba, the world to come. There is a belief that there are to be two messiahs. One, the first, the Messiah, the Mashiach of Yosef, who will die. And then the Mashiach of David, who will usher in the period of what we will refer to as Mashiach. Now, in the book of Yeshaya it speaks of the wolf lying with the sheep, and lions will eat grass like oxen. All illusions of peace and harmony, not only amongst man, but also nature. There are many prophecies that seemed improbable at the time, but have occurred in our time today. It states, for example, that the barren woman will give birth to more children than one who is fertile. With modern drugs and medicine, women who are barren have given birth to multiple children at one time, as much as six times. There are prophecies that the Messiah will come to a generation that is godless. The millennials are the least religious of all generations in the history of the United States. It states that the generation of the Messiah will be a time of social unrest, a relaxation of social and sexual mores. As we see today with newfound acceptance and pervasiveness, homosexuality, transvestites, and many other acts that previously were looked upon as deviations are now the norm. It states that the generation of the Messiah will be a time when the children will bring their parents back to religious beliefs. This seems almost impossible in that we are a people who revere our elders. So how is it that children can bring their parents back to religion? However, due to pogroms, that drove many religious Jews out of the religious communities in Europe to places where they were forced to give up or adjust their religious practices to survive and make a living. In European towns, one had to be religious. If you weren't, you couldn't be married and you couldn't be buried. When they left their shtibloch, their small communities in Europe, they now had a choice to be religious or not and many chose not to. Their children were brought up without any religious education or influences, which brought up a generation of parents who could not, nor wanted, anything to do with God and religion. In addition, the Holocaust wiped out a whole generation of grandparents and left a generation of survivors, parents who were angry with God and wanted nothing to do with religion. They brought up their children as secular individuals, and now their grandchildren are bringing their parents back to Judaism. There is a belief that when the Messiah will come, the whole world will know about it at the exact same moment. In the past, that would have seemed to be impossible. However, today, with the internet, one push of a button, and everyone, everywhere, can know the same thing instantly. We are told that with the coming of the Messiah, there will be a great war between Gog and Magog. We can only hope that this event 
already occurred with the, all the tragedy and horror of World War II. If not, we can look forward to the war of all wars. May God save us from that. But who are Gog and Magog? In Korean, the word Magog means beautiful nation, which is the word that they use to refer to the United States. Our rabbis tell us that the world can only exist for 6,000 years. We are in the year 5,779. So, what's the big fuss about Mashiach? Now. As we say in the Kaddish, Bagalov is man kariv, speedily and in our time, meaning that we pray that God will bring the Messiah early, before the 6,000 year deadline. Now, at the time of Messiah, the Mashiach is referred to as Shabbat. And just like with the Shabbat, we can start the Holy Day early by adding from Friday before sunset to the seventh day of the Shabbat. We can bring the Shabbat in with what we call the plak, allowing us to usher in the Shabbat one and a quarter hours earlier before sunset. So too, the world today is in the time dimension of the plak. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe would say often that we are the generation of Mashiach. Now many people wonder why there is no eighth Lubavitcher Rebbe. And it would seem that the Rebbe, before he died, said to his Hasidim, his followers, that he had done all that he could do to bring Mashiach, and the rest was up to them. Now this scenario is similar to the events that took place at Kriyas Yamsuf, at the splitting of the crossing of the sea when the Jews left Egypt. At that time, God Almighty told Moshe Rabbeinu that he, would move to the, he should move to the back of the nation. He had done all that he could do. The rest was up to the nation. The sea didn't split until Naqshem ben Aminadu jumped into the sea. We need to do our part in order to bring the Shia. Now our prophets have told us that the Messiah will come riding on a donkey. Today, that seems kind of strange. Maybe he'll come in a limo, rolls, but a donkey? The word for donkey in Hebrew is chamor. The gamachi of the word chamor, ches mem resh, is 248. This is an interesting number because there are 248 positive commandments in the Torah. So, how, so can there be a deeper meaning with both the word Chamor and the Gematria of 248. Now, if someone were to ask you, which would be more grievous sin against God and His Torah? Doing an act the Torah forbids, transgressing a negative commandment, meaning doing an action contrary to what God has told us, or sinning by omission, not doing anything, transgressing a positive commandment. And I may well answer that doing an action a negative is far graver than doing nothing. However, our sages tell us that when one transgresses a negative commandment, what he does is he creates a negative energy. If that person repents, that sin, and does so with love, the Ahava, he can actually transform that sin into a mitzvah. However, that is only the case with a negative commandment. With the transgression of a positive commandment, there is nothing that was created, nothing to retrieve, nothing to elevate. So when we say Messiah will come riding in on a donkey, it well, may well mean that it is necessary that we do positive commandments so that he will have the vehicle, our positive commandments, the chamor, to enter in upon. As I mentioned before, there was a prophecy that there will be a Mashiach from the house of Yosef who will die, and then Mashiach ben David will come and usher in a new era. Now we know that the body of Yosef is buried in Shechem, in Nablus. And a few years back, Muslims in Shechem desecrated the gravesite of Yosef, at Sadiq. Now we can only hope that this was a sign of the coming of Mashiach with the desecration of Yosef's grave, so to speak, the death of Mashiach and Yosef. Now, when the Jewish nation was exiled to Babylon after the destruction of the first temple, the prophet told them they would be in exile for 70 years 
and then they would return. Somehow, no one was able to figure out when the 70 years ended, with many different opinions. So too today. Though we know that Mashiach is close, we don't know when and how he will appear. But we can pray that his entrance will be with kindness and mercy, and he comes quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom.